Ladies and gentlemen, Lightfall has been out a month and we have already received two, yes, two patches that messed up our builds since its release. This is due to stacking mods and making our builds ridiculously OP in PvE and PvP. What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome back to another video. I have been using these modified builds in PvE and PvP in order to adjust to Bungie nerfing things left and right, as well as how some mods actually work. For example, if you didn't notice it yet, we can no longer use the Empowered Finish mod with any other yellow mod in our class item, and we can no longer stack multiple copies of the Empowered Finish mod either. So, I have made two builds for you guys, one for PvE and one for PvP when it comes to the Strand Hunter. Let's go ahead and start with PvE first. Now, there are multiple builds out there for PvE. Some, like mine, that utilize Star Eater Scales as the DPS King for Hunters. And there are others that use Assassin's Cowl and a few other exotics. For this build, we will be using Star Eater Scales and getting our super ridiculously fast, as well as doing insane amounts of damage to any boss that we come across. And this will decimate any adds that come near you. Let's go ahead and start with the artifact first. So, in the first column, I am using Anti-Barrier Pulse Rifle, as well as Unstoppable Scout, and Overloaded Auto SMG. We are using Multi-Siphon Mods. We are using Authorized Mods Grenades, Void, and Strand. Now, we will be focusing a lot on Void for this, um, at least when it comes to the weapons. We are using Volatile Flow, as well as Shattered Orbs with Bricks from Beyond, Prismatic Transfer, as well as Medieval Champion, because I do actually use um, swords in PvE as well as PvP from time to time. Next, let's go ahead and head over to the subclass. As of this video, Silk Strike is the only available super that we can actually run on this class, so that's pretty much what we're gonna use. As for our abilities, these are interchangeable. You can do whatever you want in order to, you know, help appease your build. However, I like to use Gambler's Dodge, Triple Jump, Threaded, uh, threaded Spike, which you throw a rope dart that bounces between targets, damaging and severing them. The dart will return to you once it's done, returning melee energy to you for each target hit. It does not have to kill them. It just needs to hit them. And then you can go ahead and press R1 or whatever your equivalent button is. Uh, just as the dart gets back to you to catch it and increase the amount of energy returned. Then we also use grapple, which during and shortly after grappling, your melee attack deals um, area damage and unravels targets. This is going to be huge. For our aspects, we are using Widow Silk, which you have an additional grenade charge and your grapple creates a grapple tangle at the grapple point. Then we also using Ensnaring Slam, which activate your air move to consume your class ability energy and dive to the ground, suspending all nearby targets on impact. Using this ability extends class ability cooldown time. As for our fragments, we are using the Threat of Generation, which dealing damage generates grenade energy, and this gives you a negative 10 to discipline. We are using Thread of Warding, which picking up an Orb of Power grants Woven Mail, and it's pretty much like a shield. This gives you negative 10 resilience. We are using Thread of Binding, which final, uh, super final blows emit a suspending burst from the target, and this gives you a plus 10 to resilience. And then we are also using Thread of Finality, which finisher final blows create Threadlings, and this gives you a plus 10 to recovery. Now, when it comes to GMs and they will be released next week. I actually change a couple of things Instead of using the grapple I do use shackle grenades Which um, You throw a weapon of weighted strand matter that detonates on impact suspending targets and creating additional suspended sub projectiles and then I switch out binding for continuity which Suspend, Unravel, and Sever effects applied to targets have increased duration. And then I also switch out Finality with Mind, which defeating suspended targets grants class ability energy. Now, when it comes to champions 
in GMs or even Masters or actually anywhere, if you run this build specifically as it is right now, you do not have to worry about um, champions at all. You suspend them, you keep them in the air as long as you want to, and then go ahead and throw your shackle grenades, or you can go ahead and use your um, ensnaring slam to actually put them back in the air and just constantly do damage to them. It's ridiculous. Next, let's go ahead and talk about weapons. I like using Wither Horde in PvE and PvP, and it's just amazing. It does crazy amounts of damage. Um, so that's pretty much why I use it almost all the time. Now, I am also using Funnel Web. This has Substance as well as uh, Frenzy. And then I'm currently using a corrective measure that is time loss with Rewind Rounds and Firefly, but I will be working on this Retrofit Escapade to have four times a charm and targeting uh, target lock, sorry. Next, let's go ahead and go over our armor. And we do have two pieces of Artifice gear on, which is the helmet and the class item. Let's go ahead and start with the helmet first. So for the helmet, we are running double assets to assets, which you gain bonus super energy on grenade kills with uh, hands-on, which you gain bonus super energy on melee kills. When you use your um, grapple as well as the powered melee, it does count for both. So that's important, especially when it comes to the gauntlets. I am running Firepower, which your grenade final blows create orbs of power, as well as Heavy Handed, which your powered melee final blows create orbs of power. These both activate when you use your grapple with your powered melee, just so you guys know ahead of time. Then we also use a grenade kickstart, which when your grenade energy is fully expended, you gain uh, grenade energy. And additionally, your armor charge is consumed and you gain additional grenade energy for each stack. For the chest piece, since we're running void, we are running one uh, void reserves with double charged up. And this increases the maximum number of stacks of armor charge you can carry by one. As for our exotic, we are using Star Eater Scales. Uh, I am running Double Innervation, which reduces grenade cooldown each time you pick up an Orb of Power, as well as Stacks on Stacks, which picking up an Orb of Power grants you one additional stack of Armor Charge. And then last but not least, our Cloak. I am running a Single Bomber, which reduces grenade cooldown when using your class ability as well as Reaper, which after using your class ability, your next weapon final blow spawns, uh, spawns in Orb of Power. And then I am also using Healthy Finisher, which finishers heal you, and it will consume one armor stack charge. However, I have found out that Woven Mail that you get from Threat of Warding does not always proc whenever you pick up an Orb of Power. So staying alive has become an issue for me. So when I do use my Grapple and Power Melee and it does not kill them, I will go ahead and finish them and it will automatically heal you all the way up to full health. This is why I like using this over something like Better Already or Recuperation, which I think takes a long time to actually get your uh, health back. When it comes to PvE, your main objective is pretty much to grapple melee or grapple power melee, grapple power melee, suspend, weapon kill, grapple power melee, do finishers, all while collecting orbs of power in order to get your super extremely fast and in order to obtain Feast of Light times four that you get from your exotic, which is Star Eater Scales. As soon as any boss doesn't have a shield up, go ahead and pop your super and watch their health deplete. Make sure you're just using the regular melee and not the powered melee, because the power melee will spread out the damage all around, while the regular melee focuses on that one area, which will be where the boss is. Now, the only issue you'll have with this build is Tormentors suppressing you, because they seem to do it as soon as you pop your super, and it is very, very annoying. As I already said, in Grand Masters, you really don't need to worry about the champions that are on the field because you will always be suspending them with your shackle grenades, extending the timer with threat of continuity, and then after you defeat them, 
you will gain more class ability energy from Threat of Mind. And that's pretty much everything for PvE. Now, let's go ahead and go over PvP. And there are a few changes. Starting with the subclass. I do run Threat of Continuity as well as Threat of Mind. Um, I will run Marksman's Dodge in PvP as well. And I like using Strafe Jump over Triple Jump in PvP. Um, but yeah, that's just what I do. For weapons, yes, I still use Wither Horde. And you can ask any member in my clan when they are playing uh, PvP with me and they die, they go to my screen to watch me kill people with Wither Horde. I ridiculously, like, I don't know how it happens, but I stick people with Wither Horde like it's cool. I'm probably, out of all the 3,072 kills that I have in Crucible, probably a good 92% of them is by sticking people with Wither Horde. And it's, it's just ridiculous. I love it. I am also using Shayura's Wrath with Dynamic Sway Reduction and Tap the Trigger. And I also do use the other half with Eager Edge and Whirlwind Blade. I use this Ghost for PvE. I use this Ghost for PvP just because of the modularity uh, Crucible. As for um, armor, I do use three pieces of Artifice gear, uh, which is the head, the chest, and the cloak for the head i run double void siphon mods which rapid void weapon final blows create an orb of power and then i also use hands-on which you gain bonus super energy on melee kills for the gauntlets i use uh firepower as well as heavy-handed but i also use focus and strike which grants class ability energy when you cause damage with a melee attack on the chest, I run Unflinching Void Aim, which reduces flinching from incoming fire while aiming a void weapon. And then I also do use Sniper Damage Resistance, which reduces incoming damage from combatants that are at long range. Having Sniper uh, Damage Resistance in conjunction with Resilience at max, you will not be one shot by any sniper at all. Then for the exotic, I like using Stompies. And with this, I run a single innovation with double Void Weapon Surge. And this reads, your Void Weapons gain a small bonus to damage while you have any armor charge. Your armor charge now decays over time. And yes, any Surge does still work in PvP. Uh, I don't care what anyone tells you, it does still work in PvP, just not as good as it does in PvE. And then for the um, class item, I am running Double Bomber, which reduces grenade cooldown when using your class ability. And then I'm also using Reaper. As you guys can tell, we are playing this subclass a little different in PvP than I do in PvE. And it's a little bit more reserved on the grenade energy side because you don't want to go popping your grenade energies every two seconds because, well, one, you can't because you don't get grenade energy that fast. And two, you want to reserve your, uh, your grenade energy for fast and smart plays. When it comes to your stats for PvE and PvP, you want to max out on resilience, mobility, and discipline in exactly in that order. Because these are going to be the stats that help you out the most when it comes to your build. And unfortunately, due to Lifefall being released, it changed the way that Powerful Friends actually works. And no longer gives you that plus 20 in mobility which makes it a lot harder to get triple 100s in your stats. It is still possible, but it'll take a lot more to actually do. And at this point, it's more like you should better put your stats where you want them instead of just trying to get triple 100s. And that's pretty much the build for PvE and PvP. Let me know what you guys think about the build in the comment section below, as well as if you have a similar build or there is something that you want me to try out in the build, let me know down in the comment section as well. And then I will go ahead and try it and see if I like it. And if I do like it better than what I'm currently doing, I will make an updated video um, on that. And I will go ahead and tag you in it as well. And that my friends bring us to the end. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe to my channel, like and share the video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in the next one.
Hey, hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go, 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 go.